Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. It's the season of the witch, so I have some witchy DIYs for you today. As part of the Hocus Pocus collab, hosted by my very talented and entertaining sweet friend, Indiana Jones, celebrating the release of Hocus Pocus 2. Let's get into it. I'm wrapping the styrofoam cone that I got at Dollar Tree with Crayola Air Dry Clay that I flatten nice and thin with my brayer. It was my intention to make two clay pieces today, but the others are fully dry, so that'll be part of next week's retro vintage collab. Anyway, I'm going to completely cover the cone with the clay sheets. I'm adding them in sections, pressing for good adhesion. Once it's completely covered, I roll the ball, not the ball, the cone on the table to smooth the clay as much as possible. I have a dowel that's a few inches long, so I'll push that into the top of the cone about a third of the way down to poke a hole in there. I cover a two inch styrofoam ball in clay too, the same way I covered the cone. This will be the witch's head. I use a cookie cutter to cut a circle from my flattened clay for the brim of her hat. I push the dowel into the ball and pop it into the cone. This will make it easier to attach her hat since her head's connected to her body. I dampen the top of her head using a paintbrush before adding the brim of her hat. This will help it stick better. And then I place the brim center top and I press on it to be sure it's well stuck. I'll shape the brim to my liking. To make the point of her hat, I roll a cone of clay and cut it to size. I shape it a wee bit, and then I'll push a toothpick into her head right where I want the cone to go. And I'll push the cone onto the toothpick. I dampen the clay where the hat cone meets the brim, and I'll use my brush handle to blend the clay together. I roll the handle over the area, which will smooth and blend the clay so that it looks like a solid piece. I roll a small ball of clay and cut it in half. These will be her cheeks. I push them into place and I use my brush handle again to incorporate them into the clay on her face. I roll out a snake of clay for her arms and I'll cut that in half too. I'll shape them a bit, just rounding the cut ends. I press the arms in place, and again, I'll roll my handle over them to incorporate them into the clay too. She's gonna need at least two days to dry, so I'll set her aside and we'll get back to her. In the meantime, let's make some mini signs. To save time, I've already base coated all of my little signs white. I'm a huge Bewitch fan and I saw this on Pinterest and knew I had to make one. This is a four inch wood round and I've cut my details from black vinyl using my silhouette. First, I'll add this witch broom to the side and then I'll add my lettering, Bewitch in a minute. I just thought that was so cute. I also added a couple stars off to the side of the, the broom to fill in that negative space. I also use the uh, Witched font, which I got from Defont.com. It's a good replica of the Bewitched TV show font. This is what I do in my spare time. I search for cool fonts. I'll list all fonts that I use in the description box with the supplies. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush completely around the edge with Ceramco charcoal. I've also painted the back and two of those Dollar Tree little wood blocks with charcoal as well and I'll use some hot glue to attach them to the back as a stand. Next is the Magics of Foot sign. I painted a Dollar Tree Wood Witch hat cutout with white as well, and I'll Mod Podge this fancy tissue paper to it. I'm using a healthy coat of Mod Podge. I trim away some of that excess paper before adding a top coat of Mod Podge. 
I'm using the burn method to remove the rest of the extra paper. Please be very careful when using this method. I have an old pan and a cup of water handy as a precaution. The flame will only burn away the tissue paper that doesn't have any Mod Podge on it. I brush away the ash and then I'll dry brush the edges with some charcoal paint and I'll also add some details by dry brushing. I sound like a broken record, but I'm dry brushing the edges of this 5x6 wood rectangle and I go heavy in the corner where it would be a wee bit more worn, you know, if this was a legitimate vintage piece. I hot glue the hat into place with the top part of the hat hanging off the top part of the sign and then I dry brush around the hat before adding my vinyl elements. A moon and stars up here in the corner. Magic's afoot, again using the witched font. And a few quasar stars too. When I was a kid, I loved reading Dory the Witch books, so I printed a picture of Dory and her cat Gink onto regular old printer paper, and I tore the edges to give them a decal finish. I mod podge her onto this 2.5 by 5 inch slat, also from the Dollar Tree, and I'll cover both the slat and the back of the paper before adhering her. Also, I did spray the pick with clear matte sealer first before I Mod Podge because Mod Podge will smear the ink otherwise. I'll get her into place and then I'll roll over her with my brayer and then a top coat of Mod Podge. I'm applying the top coat with a cosmetic sponge and you guessed it, I dry brush with charcoal. She gets a couple of those Dollar Tree blocks as a stand as well. I think the last sign is my favorite. It's another 5x6 that I cover in tissue paper, just like before. And I'm doing a negative stencil effect, so I cover the plaque with vinyl letters, spelling out which. I'll have some of the letters spilling over the edge of the plaque. I like the way that looks. With a cosmetic sponge, I pounce Mod Podge over the lettering. This prevents the paint from seeping under the vinyl. When it's dry, I pounce over top of it with ceram coat charcoal. Now that the paint is nearly dry, I'll peel off the vinyl and I'll lightly sand it to distress. As always, I spray all the signs with clear matte sealer. I love this little collection of witch signs. What do you think? Our clay witch is dry. She has some cracking, but I like that. It makes her look more vintage. First thing I do is paint her hat with Ceramco charcoal, starting with the underside of the brim. Then I paint the rest of the hat with two coats. While that's drying, I paint her dress starting around her arms. Her sleeves will get painted white, so I'm just painting around them and the rest of her dress with charcoal. I paint her face, neck, and arms with two coats of ceram coat white. Paint her features with Hippo Gray. One of my viewers challenged me to not use Hippo Gray, but I'm sorry, Terry. I must use Hippo Gray, especially during Halloween season. I kind of do it. Maybe after Halloween. We'll see. With my liner brush, I make an arch like a sideways capital D with a wee flick at the end for an eyelash. Her right eye will be winking, so kind of like a sideways S and I'll just make it a wee bit thicker in the middle.
she gets some eyebrows, just little comma strokes. I'm giving her a triangle nose, like a jack-o'-lantern. Originally, I was thinking she would be like a white pumpkin. So we're just going to run with that. She'll get sweetheart lips. Top lip is like a sideways capital B and the bottom lip like the letter C. And then I'll fill them in. I dipped out her eye using a dail right in the center. With a skewer, I dot a white highlight in her eye up toward the top. I dry brush her cheeks with ceram coat drizzle gray. Her lips will get curved white highlights just thin curved strokes. Her cheeks get white swirls. And a couple of eyelashes, again, with Hippo. And I give her a couple on the other eye, but I realize my hand's blocking your view. I stripe her sleeves, alternating drizzle, rain, and Hippo, all the way up her sleeve. I cut out some vinyl starbursts to add to her dress, and I do realize that I'm completely out of shot. I get so involved, I forget to check to make sure I'm in frame. Sorry about that. So here I'm just dry brushing her all over with rain gray. This will catch in all the little cracks and all the little bumps and all the texture. It'll help to add to that vintage feel. I give her a full coat of Mod Podge with a cosmetic sponge. I want to make sure everything is well sealed. I'm using fabric glue to add a ribbon band around her hat and the top of the hat will get a vinyl star too and then some Mod Podge to seal it. This bear did not want to stick. Got there in the end though. That's all that matters. The Mod Podge really helped. I add fabric glue to both ends of the dale that's her neck, and I pop her head on, and I pop that onto the body. To embellish the bottom of her dress, I twisted together some black and silver tinsel rope, and I hot glue it into place. I wrap her neck with some festooned crepe paper garland. I'll link my video that shows how to make it in the description box. I cut it to size and glue it. She'll get one final touch. I've made her a broom from a skewer and a tassel. I dry brushed the skewer with rain gray and I made the tassel by wrapping baker string around my hand and tying it off. I push the skewer through the tassel and I'll add a drop of hot glue where the tassel meets the skewer. I'll glue her broom into place with both fabric glue and hot glue. There we go. She's finished. So there we have it. 
some projects for the magic in all of us. Thank you, Annie, the hostess with the mostest, for bringing us all together for this mystical adventure. You'll find links to Annie's channel, Crafting with Indiana Jones, and the playlist in the description box, along with a list of my supplies. Please be sure to check them out for more witchy Halloween fun. Also, be sure to come back next Friday, too. Annie and I are hosting a Retro Vintage Halloween Collab Part 2. Prayers up for all affected by Hurricane Ian. Please stay safe. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.